you can move on to the next one okay and by the way if you were to do this on rogers it'll be the same thing right yet you would have an extra complication why because you need to grab um, the specific volume for the vapor on one table and specific volume for the um, liquid on another one so you know obviously you can do it on either just rogers takes a bit more time a bit more there's more places to go wrong i guess um okay so let's go to the next one next one is part d let me go ahead and take these out of the way okay part d says 200 kilopascals and 60 degrees celsius so now we have both temperature and um pressure it's still water still in kilogram of water so no worries there oh and by the way because it's one kilogram of water i could very well eliminate this right so i could just say it's 600 kilo uh, 640 kilojoules um, 2700 kilojoules etc because we know it's one kilogram so i don't need to keep that kilogram if i don't want to <clears throat> um okay so now we have two properties and now i have temperature and pressure all right temperature and pressure so what i do you can you can um you can look at this both in the uh, temperature table or in the pressure table it doesn't matter because you have both all right if you have a if you know you have a saturated liquid and you're looking you have both then you want to stick with to the temperature table but to far, to do the reading it doesn't matter okay to do the reading of the, the situation you're in um, so let's go ahead and look at the pressure uh, at the temperature table we are at 60 celsius so we're, we're right here 60 celsius and the reading that we're making here is data didn't tell us what we're what we're dealing with they didn't tell us if we're dealing with a um, compressed fluid a saturated liquid a mixture a saturated vapor or a superheated fluid right those, those are our options we don't know yet but we can find out just by looking at the tables note that we are at 60 and the saturated pressure is about 20 yet we know that our pressure the pressure we're in is 200 kilopascals right so because 200 kilopascals is greater than the saturated pressure which happens to be 20 then we can conclude this is a compressed fluid okay we can, we can reach that conclusion and therefore we need to grab the properties um, as if considering this to be a compressed fluid so the other way to do this is on the pressure table it's exactly the same analysis on the pressure table pressure table I'm going to look at 200 kilopascals so I'm looking let's eliminate these for now okay so I'm looking here and I'm noting that at 200 kilopascals the temperature saturated temperature that is is 120 we are at 60 so therefore same conclusion because 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 we are at um, 120 degrees celsius which is greater than the temperature in 60 degrees celsius note that it's the inverse idea of when you look at the temperature table right then we know this is a compressed fluid all right and if we were to have the opposite situation like such then we knew we would know this is a superheated fluid all right uh, we can do the same thing on on rogers if we want to 200 that's going to be uh, or 60 right we can do the temperature here at 60 60 so the saturated temperature is 0.19 bar same thing as the one we just um, evaluated as before if it's um, 0.19 bar as a saturation temperature we are above that we are at 200 so therefore that's not going to be any good for us the other way to do it is exactly like we did before we look at two two are we two two bar here we are two bar we look at two bar and we're going to look oh this is 120 we're at 60 so therefore no good we are um we're going we're in a compressed region fluid all right okay so now that how do we now that we identify we're in a compressed uh region fluid what does that tell us well the first thing it tells us that there like there's really no uh, quality right the quality doesn't make sense so we can say xa mm, not applicable all right if you had you know if you had a 
an exam unit had to check a box with the answer of the quality, you could say the quality is zero because you have no vapor, right? But this is inaccurate because you don't have a saturated um, liquid, right? You actually have a compressed fluid, so that's why we say it's not, not a broken law. But without with that technicality out of the way, how do we grab these guys? So this is a deal. If you don't have, if your pressure is not too big, not too much, um, and you can look at, depending on what you're dealing with, you can think about two megapascals or five megapascals, right? You don't need to worry about going into a different table. You can say that the, the compressed fluid, the properties of the compressed fluid, are similar to the properties of the saturated liquid. Oops, saturated liquid, all right? So in that case, what we do is we go to the temperature table, and this is super critical. This is another place that students often go wrong. Use a temperature table and not the pressure table because the temperature table will lead you to have a smaller error, right? Temperature table, and you grab the, um, the saturated liquid properties at the temperature table. So what, we're, what we would do for our case here is we, we would say the answer for our case is this value here. So the specific volume is 0.0. 0, 10, 17, and that's meters cubed per kilogram. And the enthalpy is going to be the one for saturated liquid. So continue here. So it's this one here, right? So 251.18. Those are the answers we're going to we're going to give as our final answer there. Oh my god, I missed it completely. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so again, all I'm doing is I'm saying because the pressure is not um, is not huge, because the pressure is not huge, then the properties of the compressed fluid are similar to those of the saturated oops, of the saturated liquid. Okay, and therefore I'm approximating them to be those. Okay, but what if we were to have a big pressure. So then what do we need to do? Well, then you have to go to another table. It's a compressed, um, it's the compressed fluid table. It's actually here somewhere. Let's see if I can find it. Superheated, 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 compressed liquid for water. And you're going to grab the properties of whatever. Actually, look at that. It only starts at five megapascals, right? You don't have anything below precisely because of what I just said. Okay. And... Here, let's see on the Rogers, they also should have a compressed one. Compressed water. Okay, so it's the same idea. All right, and this one starts at 100 bar, just to give you an idea. All right, cool. So, with that out of the way, we got D ready, and now we can go into question to letter E, last but not least. Okay. And by the way, these are examples and they apply across the board, right? So whenever you have saturated liquid, you can going to do the same method we did here. Whenever you have saturated vapor, you're going to do the same method we did here. Whenever you have mixture, you're going to do the same method we did here. Whenever you have a compressed fluid, as long as it's not, um, it's below five megapascals, you're going to do the same thing we did here. If it's more, you're going to use a compressed table. And now the final example, E, we're at 500 kilopascals and 200 degrees Celsius, okay? So, five hundred kilopascals and two hundred degrees Celsius. Let's do exactly the same exercise, the whole thing through. Make sure that this is super clear. We're going to start looking at the temperature table. I'm going to go to two hundred Celsius, right here, and I'm going to note that the saturated pressure is fifteen hundred kilopascal. Right, our pressure, the pressure we were given, is 500 kilopascals, so we are below. Okay, so note that's exactly the opposite of what we had on the compressed fluid. So because our pressure of our system is smaller than the saturated pressure, we know this is a super heated, superheated, superheated fluid. Okay, that's how we know. So this table we're in, no good. Need to go into the superheated water table. All right, but let's look at this 
from the pressure table because you can use either, right? And some students are more comfortable with one, some are more comfortable with the other one, it depends. Okay, so we are at 500 kilopascals, where are we? 500, we already had it highlighted. And the temperature is 151, 151. Our temperature, our temperature is 200 degrees Celsius. And because we are above 151, which is the saturated temperature, which is equal to 151, then because of that, we know this is a superheated fluid. Okay? Now, a couple, a tip that I like to give to my students. It's often good to um, not necessarily use both tables, but to know how to read it in both tables. Because a lot of students, they prefer to use the pressure table to identify superheated fluids because it's intuitive right your temperature is greater than the temperature of the saturated heater so therefore you're at superheated uh, superheated fluid situation so it's, it's it's intuitive to use the pressure table on the other hand when we're talking about compressed uh, fluids it's intuitive to use a temperature table because your pressure is greater than the saturated pressure so therefore you have a compressed fluid right if you if you do the other way around, you need to reverse the logic, and sometimes students get confused with reversing the logic. So, you know, a tip for you is uh, use this one, the temperature, uh, sorry, the pressure table, to check if it's below the, the saturated temperature, you know it's a superheated fluid. If it's, uh, uh, excuse me, if the temperature is above, you know it's a superheated fluid. If it's below, then you can go ahead and say it's a compressed fluid, but if you're not sure, you can go back into the temperature table and check to be sure. All right. So let's let's finish this off. If we have a superheated fluid, then we want to use a superheated table, and we are at 500 and 200 cells, so 200, 500. This is not no good for us. We are at 500 kilopascals, so 500 kilopascals is the same thing as 0 0.5, 0 0.05 megapascals. All right. So multiply by a thousand. You get 500 kilopascals, so it's the same thing. And we are at 200 Celsius, so we're interested here in the 200 Celsius line. Boom. Okay. That, let me just make sure that's right. We multiply by 1,000, you're going to get... No, excuse me, that's wrong, right? Because you're going to multiply by 1,000, it's going to be 50. 50 kilopascals. So, no, no, no. Forget what I said. We need 0.5 megapascals. Here we are. Okay. This is, this is a 500 kilopascals. Remember when I was a student, I actually wrote next to my property tables, like the conversions, just to ensure I didn't get these things wrong on an exam, these silly things wrong. Anyways, we are after the uh, quality. Once again, quality does not apply here. Okay, We don't have uh, any saturated liquid whatsoever, nor vapor. Um, we want specific volume, so this is, I think... Yeah, specific volume is the first column, and then enthalpy is the third column. Okay, so our answers uh, we're going to put at the bottom there are going to be the specific volume is going to be 42.503 meters cubed per kilogram, and the enthalpy will be 28. 2855.8. So let's finish this off. Here we are. All right. So what is the quality? Once again, the concept of quality makes no sense here. It's not applicable. And once again, if you needed to put in an exam because you have a box to fill, you would put 100% because you don't have any liquid whatsoever. You only have vapor. But you don't have saturated vapor. You have superheated vapor so it doesn't really apply it doesn't make sense all right and then for the enthalpy what's the enthalpy here the enthalpy is going to be 28 55.8 kilojoules per kilograms per kilograms and your specific volume will be 0.42503 okay so this question you know we've done every single possibility that you're going to find when you're doing the different uh, problems related to property tables, pure substance analysis, and then later on, 
more complex thermodynamic problems. So this is a great place to start. Again, I urge you to do this on your own, to you know be able to find these properties on your own, to understand the concepts behind it, and then just use this video as a backup. Don't rely on like copying these solutions. It will give you, it'll, you won't be able to do the problem later on. All right. So as per usual, if you have any questions, just leave them down below in the comment section. I'll be happy to address them. If um, this video has helped you out, consider giving it a like and we'll talk soon.